Is it on? Testies, testies. One, two, three. Oh my gosh. Hey everybody, welcome to Bastille Day 2012. July 14th. We are psychiatric survivors and allegedly normal. There is no normal, of course. And we're here to celebrate the achievements of Patch Adams, who's here with us today. Okay. Especially his leadership in something a lot of people don't know about. Martin Luther King, for more than a decade, called for the International Association for the Advancement of Creative yes. Maladjustment. Okay. Can you say that? The International Association for the Advancement of Creative Maladjustment. MLK said he was proud to be psychologically maladjusted, that we ought to be maladjusted to oppression, that the salvation of the world lies in the hands of the creatively maladjusted. Okay, yes. And several years ago, the wonderful Patch Adams agreed to be an honorary chair of this to help manifest it. And Mind Freedom International, this is our 26th year working on human rights in mental health. Um, I just want to have Chrissy say a few words for the youth and young adults about why what Patch is doing is so crucial to psychiatric survivors like Chrissy. Um, hi, yeah, I like to work with transition age youth and um, young adults with mental health challenges. And one of the things I think is just brilliant with Patch Adams is he brings laughter, which unfortunately children that are struggling, being forced to being medicated, oppressed or even locked away from their friends and family, lose their imagination and laughter so young. And this man right here gets the chance to bring it back to children who have lost their belly for laughter. Yes, thank Yay. you, Chrissy. Young, youth yeah. and young adults. And also we have Reverend Phil Schulman, Unitary Universalist Minister, who has worked for many years to change the mental health system. Phil, what's Patch helping us out with here in the movement? <laughs> I love, it. love. It's all about love. It's all about humanity. Don't get lost in the labels. We have one heart. We have one soul. And we come together as community. We heal together and we grow together. And that's what it's all about. Oh, you all right. So... You we're going to have an amazing person present the award to Patch Adams, and that's Dr. Carl Hammerschlag, who's done spoken word here for several years. He's a psychiatrist in Arizona. He's an author, but most important, he's a leader in really challenging the mental health system. He's one of Patch's main people on mental health. He's here in his persona of the truth fairy, the truth fairy. Tim Boyden, why don't you come up here? Because I want everyone to see Tim. And you can visit Tim's art gallery next to the Cafe Xenon in Broadway. But um, Oh, yeah. There you go. Carl is right. going to help me with a very heavy load, which is um, we're going to ask Carl to say a few words about why this work especially challenges the mental health system. And, and uh, I want to say that in the last few years, Carl has really connected with us here at the community village he's come by he's spoken he's he's available to by email to chat with him he's made videos for our movement a big round of applause for Carl Hammerschlag the truth fairy Yay. Yay. <laughs> it's always amazing to be introduced by David Oakes because you never know what it is that he's going to ask you to say and it's part of the spontaneity of of what makes it possible just to come and make an introduction introduction of my brother, Patch Adams. Uh, but then I wonder about uh, my credibility. I mean, here's a six foot six inch psychiatrist with an Ivy League pedigree of purported distinction dressed as a pink ballerina. And the truth is that uh, the only way that a psychiatrist can get paid attention to in contemporary life unless you're peddling pills and making diagnoses, is to dress in a way that says, hey, pay attention to what's happening in contemporary psychiatry in this country, and that we are psychopathologizing the nature of the human experience, that all, all of us have a little creative maladjustment. You want to welcome and treasure it. it. What makes us beautiful and striving allows us to dare to dream. But in this culture, if you're feeling or doing anything unusual, if you're feeling anything other than wonderful in every moment, you could be suffering from a disease. If you're a little sad, if you're a little anxious, if you're a little depressed, there is, of course, a pill, a conspiracy to psychomedicalize us and render us dependent. 
One in four Americans has a diagnosable mental illness. 25% of this country carries a mental illness diagnosis because we have more and more diagnoses. And a new book is coming out that will create almost 500. It's very important not to get sucked into the idea that if you're feeling anything other than wonderful in every moment, it's un-American. Find a way to deal with what you feel. Instead of becoming chemically, chemically dependent, become interdependent. We heal better in community. We need to deal with existential despair and loneliness. We need to find ways to remind us that we are not alone. And Oregon Country Fair is a place to do that. It reminds us of our noblest self. It allows us to dare to dream. And Patch Adams is a dreamer. I am here in my uh, official capacity as the Truth Fairy, my, pul my public clown persona. People come, they don't know what I do professionally. I make uh, appearances like a busker somewhere here at the fair. And anybody can ask me an important question that they might like to hear the answer, but we're afraid maybe to find out about it. And you get three minutes with the Truth Fairy. It's a, a chance to make a connection with somebody at an intuitive level, vibrational level. What happens when people come together? It doesn't take a long time. Three minutes, as long as it's real. And we come to each other as real. Patch Adams is the most real person that I know that ennobles the spirit of medicine and reminds me why I became a doctor. He is a visionary who doesn't give up easily, who has spent a lifetime struggling to get heard and as probably the world's most recognizable humanitarian clown talks about love and healing uh, which ought to be required in academic curricula for medicine we need to somehow honor what it is that we do best when we heal touch people's soul we met 20 years ago he touched my soul and told me that one day i could appear as a pink fairy in front of an audience and i said bullshit so here I am to tell you, we all need to look at what we thought we knew in a new way. The way it was and not the way it is. Look again at what you know and at all of your certainties. Certainty is just a tribute to arrogance and fear. Open yourself up. Look again. This is my holy brother who has allowed me to look again and reminds me of what I would choose to be. The incomparable Patch Adams. Pitch. Uh, I want Tim Boyden to come front and center here. Uh, Tim, come up here. This is the artist who created this wonderful tribute to Patch with uh, screws loose, bed springs sprung, uh, cracked pot, uh, lost marbles. Uh, and this symbolizes our brothers and sisters who are locked up forever. Uh, Tim and I are both psychiatric survivors. A bunch of us up here are psychiatric survivors. Patches, too. But this is not about psychiatric survivor. This is for lunacy promotion in the International Association for the Advancement of Creative Maladjustment. I don't know if we're going to have the massive change that we absolutely need, but Martin Luther King called for the IAACM. You're all leaders, right? You're all leaders? Who's a leader in the IAACM? All right. So, Patch, you've meant so much to me personally and also for 20 years now, 20 years, 20 years, Gesundheit Institute has been a coalition member of Mind Freedom International. Thank you, Patch Adams. Can you actually hold that yes. while I... <laughs> don't, forget the loo don't forget the loose gear, too. My friend, my friend Zorba the Greek said, you know, you've got... Everything except one thing, madness. A man needs a little madness or else, or else he never dare cut the rope and be free. In thinking about creative maladjustment, my first was I was born a man on a military base, raised up in the military, and I didn't fit in. I didn't want to be a man. I didn't want to be a man that bullied, that cared about whether a sport was won or lost. I didn't find 
males that I wanted to be, and so I decided to be a nerdy fruitcake. That was one of my first maladjustment good moves. Then I, my father died and we came back to the U.S. in the South. In 1961, I was put in an all-white school and it seemed like everybody was quiet about it. And I found out even though I, I couldn't be quiet, which meant I spoke up, which meant I was beaten up every day my last two years in high school because I couldn't be quiet. And that was another really important maladjustment. I couldn't be quiet. And it was, eh, I'll tell you what I actually did. I would hear the word nigger in school all the time and I would scream really loud, really long in class until I could see everyone hated me and then I'd scream a little bit longer to make sure I covered everybody. And then I'd say, you can say that word, but I have to do this. And it actually stopped. I mean, it stopped when I was in the class because I, I couldn't not do it. And then I reached adulthood and I, I found very little in adulthood that, that I wanted to be. I, I saw that money and power over were God, and I didn't see that made what I had accepted as my God, which was friends, and that my mom taught me to be generous and compassionate. And so I maladjusted to money. For example, since the movie, I speak, I was making a million dollars a year, but I gave it all to our work because I'm a maladjusted person with money, and I... I needed to give it away to help humanity. And then I thought that, that there was a whole lot of anonymity in, in our society. I read a lot of books about how lonely our crowd was, how we are a lonely people. And so I decided a creative maladjustment would be happy all the time in public, just to be disgustingly, revoltingly, aggressively happy. And uh, that was a very important decision. And there have been a lot more, and it's given me my life. I think the nice thing about being creatively maladjusted is that it comes from intention. So you know they're actually exaggerating about the mal part, because you're really actually adjusting to yourself that you really like. It's just that the society is really maladjusted with all what they like. So I'm, I'm honored to be part of Mind Freedom. I'm, I actually promote Mind Freedom. If you've heard me talk, I'm a family doctor that never once gave a psychiatric medicine. And I won't. I do tell you the absolutely irritating truth, which is you want mental health, you make it. I'm sorry, the few people I have met mentally healthy, they made it for themselves. The others didn't. So that's a maladjustment that other people find irritating. But I know you can make a mental health that you like and then just find other people that like you as that mentally healthy person in your style. Because this is mentally healthy to my style. If you don't like boogers, or Billy Bob teeth or strange behavior, I might get quickly irritating. <laughs> I'm not trying to be irritating. I like dangling boogers from my nose because it has a lot different effect in a general audience than not dangling boogers from your nose. <laughs> and they say in French, uh, oui, oui, uh, uh, vive la différence. Uh, I think that's what we're talking about is viva la difference, the creative maladjustment. So just remember, if you're feeling lonely, get maladjusted and you'll be in a large community because uh, everyone is nuts to somebody. I promise you, there's no one that isn't nuts to somebody. Find that nuts and you might find a playmate. So thank you very much. Oh, wait, let me just end with a beautiful little poem about madness from Emily Dickinson, who said, 
Much madness is divine as sense to a discerning eye. Much sense, the starkest madness. Tis the majority in this as all prevail. Assent, and you are saying, demur, you're straight away dangerous and handled with a chain. If you've been chained, what I recommend to those of you who go in and out of hospitals is in the hospital, act like a pussycat. And they'll think they cured you, feel good about themselves, and release you. And come back as a tiger. <laughs> and uh, enjoy yourself. Thank you. If, if you're hurting, if you need a friend, patchadams.org, my address, I answer every letter. I will care about you no matter how much you're not caring about yourself.